All right, minister, thank you, sir. Well, hello and hello again. Welcome to Living Strong, where I am your host, Prophet Johnson. We're going to go ahead and get started with part two of Be Thankful, and I'm hoping and praying that each and every one of you have had a safe trip over the holidays and your Thanksgiving and your family and that God have blessed you all and um, that we also will remember to continue to keep God first and to put God first. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, Isaiah chapter number 50 and verse number 1. God helped those who trust in him. And he also helped those who uh, they would say helped themselves. <coughs> you know the old saying, you take one step, God will take two. So we're going to start out a little rough. Hit some rough edges right off the bat, okay? Isaiah chapter number 50, verse number 1. Talking about, once again, um, just be thankful. Thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement? God is saying, bring me the bill of what seeded you in earth. Bring me the bill of what birthed you. Okay, show me the divorcement, the document, the decree, whom I have put away. Now, Bring to me the bill, show me the price of what I paid to put your mother away. In other words, to put away a certain spirit that was transferred from one generation to the next. All right? He goes on to declare, or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Can you go and find somebody that had enough money to buy you from me? Do you know that I'm married to you? I'm married to your mother? And I'm married to all of your family? Is there anyone that can bring a bill? Can you go get a creditor? Is there a bank that has enough money to pay for my putting you away because of your hairlessness? Okay? In other words, harlot. All right? Whoredom. Behold, for your iniquities. Listen, look at this. Because you veered off course. I didn't get rid of you. You got rid of me. Have you sold yourselves? You sold yourself. You went and got the bill. You went and got the creditors. You went and signed the divorce papers. Not me. You separated yourself for your friends, for your family, for everybody else. But now, guess who you coming back to? The God that you left. Watch this. And for your transgressions is your mother put away. Because of your children's sin. You, mother, you're going to listen to the child. See, there's a whole lot of children that will cause their parents to get a divorce. Especially when the seed of the child is not the seed of the father. When it is not biological. You understand? Many children will cause families, husband and wives, to get divorced because either the mother will favor the child over the relationship or the father will favor the child over the relationship. God is saying, what children did you raise that caused you to get a divorce? <clears throat> Verse number two, wherefore when I came, was there no man? When I showed up, where was your husband? When I showed up, where was your wife? No, you didn't have nobody. When I came on the scene, and now you was in the dungeon and I came in and picked you up, said the Lord. And you are not thankful. You are ungrateful for all that I've done for you. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? Was there no man? Did you have anybody or didn't you? When I called, was there none to answer? The, 
answered you? Did he answer you? Or did she answer you? Or did I answer you? Call up on the Lord and he'll show you great and mighty things. I heard you from day one, Daniel. I heard your prayer. Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Is, is my hand so short that I, I, I can't take care of you? you? You mean to tell me that you're suffering during this pandemic because you don't trust me? Did I not keep you out of the food line? Are you ashamed to go into the food line? It is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich. God know how to humble the proud. He know how to bring the nation to his knees. And I told y'all, and I prayed, and I said it back in the day, minister, you remember, don't let God bring America to his knees. And America is being brought to his knees. Why? Because we forgot about being thankful. Okay? Or have I no power to deliver? I can't redeem you, and I don't have the power to deliver you. Yes, I can do them both. I have the power to redeem because I've paid the price. <coughs> and not only do I have the power to redeem, but I have the power to deliver. Minister, that air is kicking in now. That's good. And I have the power to deliver. All right? So we, we got to have the lighting in the air, right? I don't mean to get off track. I'm going to stay with the message. Minister, check me on that because we have some discrepancies in the system we have to work out. And uh, Captain, we thank God we got it worked out. So I don't want to chase no rabbits, all right? Here we go. Or, or have I no power to deliver? Verse number two, behold, at my rebuke. Now he's saying, I know who I am. Minister, we're fine. He's saying, I know who I am. He's saying, I'm the one that's able to drive the sea. I'm the one that's able to make a river in the wilderness. Matter of fact, it feels good in here. He said, I'm the one that caused the wilderness and the rivers to dry up, and then their fish stink it because there is no water or died of thirst. In other words, I'm still God. I do what I want to do. Can you just be thankful? Can we just be thankful? I clothe the heaven, listen to this, with blackness. You know what God is saying? When I get ready to take the stars out, when I get ready to take the heavens out and all the universes out at night, I go and get the baddest, blackest outfit there is, and I throw it over the stars. And then when I throw it over the stars, I say, shine, baby, shine, because the light shining in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And every time the night come in, what you're looking at is the clothing of God, the pavilion of God, the secret place of God, the hideaway of God. If you want to find out where God is, you got to go through the darkness in order to get to the light. And I make sackcloth their coverings. Sackcloth, their coverings. In other words, they're going to cry out to God, saying, Glory unto him. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned. Verse number four. You hear the older generation say it all the time. The tongue of the learned. That I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. You better believe it. I had the tongue of the learned for everybody. God gave me the tongue of the learned. He gave me prophetic insight, prophetic wisdom and vision. And I spoke it to the individual. I had the tongue of the learned for them. But for myself, I only got the tongue of the dumb. You understand? And the tongue of the deaf. And the tongue of the used and the abused. And the tongue of the whiplash and the backlash. You understand? I got the old dirty tongue. The old two-headed sword cutting behind your back. The old backstabbing tongue. God said, no, I've given you the tongue of the learned. All right? So now I'm just beginning to learn my tongue, and some people haven't learned to hold theirs. Prophet Johnson, if it come up, you'll say it, you better believe it. If it get me in trouble, I get in trouble. If I get out of trouble, I get out. I don't talk except I talk to y'all most of the time anyway. He waking it, listen to this, he waking it morning by morning, he waking it my ear to hear as the learn. Morning by morning, every day that you get up, you're hearing something coming from the ancients, the wisdom of God, being thankful unto him, blessing his holy name. The Lord hath opened mine ears 
and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. How many of us can say that? Just be thankful. God help those that trust him. I gave my back to the smiters. Do you hear that? I gave my back to the smiters in my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. You better believe it. Every time you turn your back, they was doing something behind your back. This is why the word of the Lord declares, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper in every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. God said, look, I made the copper smith that formed the weapon that formed it against you. But one thing that the individual don't understand is that once the weapon that's formed against you is not working against you, and then every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. The person that formed the weapon is now destroyed by the tongue of judgment. And each and every individual that followed that person, that supported that person, that listened to that individual, falls under that same judgment. Why? Because that tongue was used to destroy the work of God in your life. That tongue was used as an adversary to break down the individuality of who you are, to take and prostitute and pimp your anointing and the glory of God off of your life. And God is saying, when I cut off the tongue and I cut the tongue off from you, everything that followed that tongue, everything that that tongue supported is now destroyed. So what happens? is that the individuals that they love, that supported each and every one that followed them, they now turn their tongue against that individual because they can't get the money. They can't get the honey. They've lost the houses, the cars, the dresses, the prowessness, the position in life. So the people that cannot get it no more now turn against the supplier. So you better be careful at who you are supplying and at who's feeding you backstabbing, two-faced, dirty tongues because they are going to use you to get to the high point in life to where they can fly and soar. But after they get through using you as a stepping stone, as a building block, they're going to kick you to the dust of the earth and talk about you like a scavenge, savage dog. And that you better believe. Verse number seven. <clears throat> Here it is. <clears throat> For the Lord God will help me. Did you hear that? You need to remember that. That's, all, it, it, that's, that's scripture. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Let me loosen up. Therefore have I set... My face, uh, let, let me read this right. For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. You know what like a flint is? Adamant, stone, hard. And I know that I shall not be ashamed. See, what, what happens is that God has set you like a flint, but what happens is that we soften up and we become rubber. You understand? He made me flint in the pulpit and rubber in the public. In other words, rubber with family and friends. They stretch me. In the, they might as well name me Stretch Arms Prophet, Stretch Armstrong. You know what I mean? He said, I'm setting your face hard. Because I'm going to build something in you so that you shall not be ashamed. He is near that justified me. The one that keep me, the one that protect me, he will never leave me nor forsake me. The one that justifieth me is near. This is why the enemy must be careful at how he deals with God's people. He is near that justified me. 
who will contend with me? Now, who will contend with me? Nobody. You'll be crazy. It's almost like they say, you're fighting against Israel, you're fighting against God. Well, let me tell you about Israel. Israel, <laughs> come on now. Y'all know Israel. You do stuff too. You're a bad little child too. Here we go. Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. We're going to stand together with God. Who is my adversary? You bad enough? Come on, bring it on. Why? Because the Lord is the very present help in a time of need. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Do you see that? There it is again. Who is he that shall condemn me? Who is? Why did he keep saying that? Why did he keep talking about <clears throat> the? Who is the one that's going to go and put me down? And who's going to beat me? Who's the one? Uh, come on, show your face. All right, I'm showing mine. He's saying, "Look at this." Um, lo, verse number nine again. Behold, the Lord will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as garments. The moth shall eat them up. Do you see that? Oh, God. Minister! What God is saying is that they're going to be left with their old traditions, left with their old religion and stigmas and dogmas, wearing the same old garment of clothes, having changed their mind, watching the same old television line Christian broadcast, believing the same old line prophets, giving to the same old line motivational faith healers that can't even heal a headache. And God is saying they're going to wear the same old garment the church is becoming new day by day and behold you are a new creature in Christ but because they are not willing to change they're not willing to sacrifice not willing to try nothing new I want to pimp everybody but want to pimp living strong want to steal the word want to preach like somebody else and flagorize their message and didn't want to be anointed and appointed and then on the scene so we can all be seen by somebody because we do want to be somebody and God is saying who is somebody when I was looking for anybody and anybody went and found somebody all I wanted was anybody to do the job but I went and got anybody and said will you do the job y'all know the story anybody went and looked for somebody and then somebody said well I'm gonna see if I can go find everybody and then everybody looked and everybody was supposed to be the job do the job and then everybody said no I'm gonna find anybody anybody said I'm gonna find somebody somebody went and found nobody and guess who did the job nobody did the job that everybody was supposed to do that started with anybody that could have got somebody. And now look at us. And we think we know it all. Don't we? We knows it. Yeah, we do. When the same old moth eaten in the brain, waxed out. Old, 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 old. I don't know what kind of clothes. Sackcloth and ashes beat down like camel hair and straw. Look worse than John the Baptist, worse than a hag and a vagabond sitting on a corner with Medusa, Dracula, and the three hell's angels that lost their faces. I'm not talking about the motorcycle game. I'm talking about real hell's angels, devils down there, okay? Here it is. There, there, let's see if I can read on because my blood, not good time to run up my blood, don't you think? Who is among you that feared the Lord? Who feared God? Who feared? Nobody fears the Lord. Nobody. Look, look at us. Where can we go, church? Where can we go from here? What is God going to do? What, what is he going to do? Christians are in the food line. 
We're not feeding the poor. We're being fed because we are poor. They better not put a food line nowhere around my house. Here it is. I'm getting in it. Even though I got four turkeys and five hams. Here it is. Where am I at? I probably wouldn't. I feel like it though. Who is among you that feared the Lord? That obeyed the voice of his servant? Nobody. Nobody. Just like the commercial. They put a transmission and a motor in the car. Who does that? Nobody. They done lost the fear of God. We're not afraid of the Lord. People are dying, y'all. We are in. Holy Spirit, help me. <coughs> Judgment must first begin at the house of the Lord. The righteous are scarcely saved. Where will, shall the ungodly appear? At the time of harvest, he's going to let the wheat and the tare go together, grow together. And then at that time of harvest, God is start pl uh, plucking them up and taking them out of here. There is a harvest being taken right now, y'all, from this earth. In America, there is a harvest of souls that are being taken on a daily basis by COVID-19. Y'all, we are in the early stages. I believe, minister, I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are in the beginning of the end days. We are in the beginning stages of the end time. This is the beginning of the beginning of the end. This is it. There, there is no way, even when they do come in with a vaccine or whatever, could you imagine everybody in the world having this thing in them? Could you imagine that? No, you're not thinking. You are not thinking. Think about it. Not normal. Not normal. Okay? What about all other vaccinations from the past and God used us? Folks, we weren't supposed to take no shot for nothing. We were supposed to be born on earth, live our life with all our organs, eat, eat green stuff. All right? And, and nuts and berries. Tell it like it is. I just, I'm going to get in trouble, Lord Jesus. We really were supposed to be some vegetarians and some nutitarians. All right? But God knew we wanted a ham. Okay? Now, here's the thing. All that's good. But where can the church go from here is what I'm saying, preachers. Can't nobody answer that. So this is the beginning of the beginning of the end. This is the beginning of the second coming. This is the beginning of the end, y'all. This is it. If the very elect would be, uh, would be deceived. Look who deceived the elect. Look at the president that deceived the elect. Christians, anointed, called to God, mega ministries, following demonology. You know, it is sick. America is so sick how they use abortion, how we agree with homosexuality. Yeah, I said it. How we Deal with men with men, women with women, working that which is unseemly in the sight of God against procreation. And how we claim that we care about children? Come on, y'all. This is a farce. It's a joke. It's an abomination. Okay? All right. Let's move on. We got time. Um, who is among you that feareth the Lord? that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light. Who is it? That's, they walk in, don't have no light, but it don't matter. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. <laughs> you hear that? Stay upon his God. No, we stay up on the telephone. God, y'all boy, people, y'all have no idea. That phone going to destroy a lot of y'all. Because you're busy about it. You're busy about it. See, as long as you got money, you got friends. But get rid of the money and see how many phone calls you got coming in. But you're going to tell them now. Child, we going here, we going there? No. Child ain't got no money. Here it goes. Behold, all you that kindle a fire, that can pass yourself about with sparks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> You're going to build a fire and 
Walk around with the flames on you, you hot stuff. Walk in the light of your fire. If you're going to let a fire shine, walk in the brightness of it. And in the sparks that you have kindled. But watch this. This shall you have of mine hand. You shall lie down in sorrow. <laughs> you going to build your own fire? You hot stuff? It's all right at the time people are proving of you. But you'll have your nightmares. You'll see your past. You'll look at your well and wish that your well had never went ran dry. You understand? Because when your well run dry, folks, you through. That's true what the old people said. You don't miss your water until your well run dry. Prophet Johnson, what about your well? Mine was made of quicksand. Um, minister, I think I'm going to take advantage <coughs> of those last few minutes, and we'll start them on where we're going to pick up tomorrow night, on continuing just be thankful. Let's just bump on over to Isaiah 51 since we've got a few minutes left. Hearken to me, listen to me, you that follow after righteousness. You that seek the Lord, look unto the rock which you are hewn, and to the hole of the pit which you are digged. Turn back to Christ. That's who you are hewn out of. The hole that he got you out of. Remember where you fit in at. Get in where you fit in. Stay in your element, but come out of their elements. Look unto Abraham your father, in unto Sarah that bear you. Okay? Not Abraham, the Emancipation Proclamation of the United States. That's the founding fathers of America. You know, not, you know, goes back up in there. Not, not that father. Talking about Abraham and then the example of God. And then Sarah having a meek and quiet spirit for the sisters. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Did, did you hear that? Uh, thank you, sir. God said, I called you by yourself. I bless you by yourself, and I increase you by yourself. But what did you do? You went out and got everybody else. I know that feeling. Already anointed, already appointed. But going to go and get somebody to look up to, not knowing that you got more than they got. And they jealous of what you got. I anointed you, I blessed you, and I called you by yourself. So stop trying to get everybody's approval over who you are and where you're going and what God has called you to do. Preacher, you better get that. You better stop looking for other people's approval. They'll never approve of you because they're jealous of the anointing that's on your life. Anytime a preacher tells you that he's jealous of you, and that he been jealous of you, and you still serving him, and you still paying his house note, you still paying for his family to eat, and you still serving that preacher, you tell me God is not with you. You tell me that's not love. Who do you know did that Prophet Johnson? You talking to him. We closing minister. We pick this up tomorrow night. Here it is, for the Lord, the, I, want, I, want, I, want you, I want you to see this. I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Last verse, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. How's he going to do it? Through the voice of Prophet Johnson. That's why you're taking so. Taking so, that $127 seed. I hear the Lord saying, commitment to order. I hear the Lord saying, a commitment seed. I hear the Lord saying a seed of promise. Somebody is committing to something right now. And you are not sure. The Lord said sign the paper. Stamp the agreement. Sow the seed. And watch God build your garden. There's an anointing. Watch God spread your house. Watch God give you the land. I see the garden, the trees, the house. I see it all. So a $127 seed. Why? Because the anointing is on there. I hear the Lord saying, no separation seed and a seed of separation. Separate you from the enemy's plan. No separation from God's plan. And I hear the Lord saying, blessing upon the high heel. Oh! 
God. Minister, I got the clothes. I hear the Lord say, bless him up on the high hills. Prophet, get ready. Prophet, set yourself, son, set yourself. Minister, I'm clothing, don't come back out. You're about to dance in the sunshine. You're about to move in the moonlight. And my glory is about to shine, shine in your life up and set it right up. Somewhere up, the Lord is saying, I got to go now. I got to go. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. Everything that was torn down. God said, I'm going to build her back up. And he will make her wilderness uh, like Eden like the garden of Eden minister I got 15 seconds uh, and the Lord said I'm giving birth uh, in her desert uh, like the garden of the Lord uh, in the dry place uh, I'm going to build you up uh, I feel I feel I feel a shaking anointing right now a breaking anointing right now a praise anointing right now a weapons anointing right now a healing up anointed right now in the name of Jesus Father touch your people and bring forth there comes the water beginning to flow minister I'm trying to close but I hear the Lord saying that the cistern is open and that the water is being poured upon my people sit still prophet you got to close out but I hear the Lord saying there's a ringing in my ear the jaw bell is about to break through and somebody pray for me pray for me I'm closing. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. And I want to get the last word. Thanksgiving in the voice of Melanie. Oh, Thanksgiving in the voice of praise. God said, I'm bringing it back to your house. There shall be a performance of my word. Praise me right now. Before I go, saith the Lord. Some of y'all are in shock and awe. But before this message is over, there's going to be a lingering anointing. Minister, don't rest me. Just give me five seconds. A lingering anointing is going to set up on your house. And it's going to set up on your premises. And you will not be able to move because of the power of God's grace. I'll see y'all tomorrow night. Just be thankful. Bye. I'm wise. I'm wise.